Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, and that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I've come back to you today to do... It's not exactly a tag video, but it sort of is. I saw this on Kristen, Kristen L. SFF Reader's channel, and she was talking about what do I like as a reader and asked other people to do it as well. So that is what I'm here to do. So what do I like as a reader? While my favorite genres are science fiction and fantasy, those are my go-to, I do read widely and I have read a little bit of everything out there. I like everything from almost every genre that's out there. I guess to start off, I'm going to say I am not an escapist reader. Many, many times people will think that those who read are only trying to escape into a different world because due to problems in their life. If I have a problem, I tend to obsess over it, and that's all my mind wants to think about, and so I can't focus on reading. So if I'm reading more, it's because things are calmer in my life. So on the reverse side, I believe that everything I read informs me in some way even fantasy for, for oh, I already put it away I was gonna say for example I just finished The Unbroken recently by C.L. Clark and one of the things that caught my attention most was the description of the conscript soldiers children soldiers and how they were taken from their families my husband is Kiowa that is one of the North American tribes and since been married to him I had found out about the native schools where white people took native children away from their family and abused them and beat them and tried to beat the Indian out of them and teach them white ways but then at the same time refused to see them as white and so kept treating them different because of the color of their skin and the story of the conscript soldiers is that basically the children were taken they were abused and beaten and taught to basically you have to die for this country that it's taken you and tried to you know strip them of their identities and then when those children went back to Kazal, I mean not all of them were from Kazal, but those who were then they're in that weird limbo place because they're not actually Kazali but they're not Baladaran either and again then you have the children who actually survive the these Indian board, boarding schools and they haven't been taught with their traditions so they're not exactly a member of their tribe but then they're not white either puts them in a like weird limbo spot so that's why I say is everything I read no matter what will then inform and echo back to what is real what is happening in this world I don't go out seeking books that have certain messages. I don't I don't read for themes. I read primarily for characters. If you if your book has interesting characters even no plot, I will still read it. Like The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. That book universally is known to be plotless. It's basically a let's get the band together book and it's all about characters and I really enjoyed it. If your characters on point I'm gonna be with you, no matter if you take me nowhere. And I'm not necessarily looking for a certain type of character. I like characters who, I mean, I do like characters who are curious about how things are working, whether it's uh, someone who's curious how machines work or someone's curious why this oppressive system has been happening. I like characters who are curious. I was going to say I don't mind a passive character, but I, I, I actually I kind of do. It, it depends. I, I don't do passive characters very well. And I don't necessarily have to like the characters that I'm reading. You know, for example, and I'm reading right now The All-Consuming World. I don't think I like the characters in this, but they're compelling. And I can see where they're coming from. So that allows me to enjoy reading from their perspective. I mean, truly reading enhances empathy and empathy is being able to put yourself in someone's shoes whether you agree with that their position or not 
So empathy does not mean I have to agree with you, but it means I am willing to understand you. And books allow me to exercise my empathetic muscles. I enjoy immersive world building, but if your characters are boring <laughs> or no, so I enjoy immersive world building, but if I can't get on board with your characters, I'm not going to stay in your world. Even if I think it's interesting, I, the character is what pulls me through the world, allows me to uh, observe everything. So your character really is holding a lot of weight. According to my story graph info, it says I like books that are fast paced and adventurous. And that probably is true just because a fast paced book is a little bit easier to read, especially when I don't have a lot of time. I know as a child, I would read huge books and I was totally fine with that. But now as I'm an adult, I do prefer to pick up books that are shorter because I can get through them faster and then I can move on to the next book. So it allows me to read more if they're not epic volumes. But that doesn't mean that I am not going to read a chunky book. It just means that I'll probably put it off until I know I have more time to enjoy it. Or I will read it for two months. So length the book doesn't matter. The, again, adventures just means that it's a little bit faster paced, things are happening, but I, I like slow books as well. Like one of my favorites so far this year is How Do You Live by Jinsaburo Yoshino. This was, this is actually a classic Japanese story and was recently translated into English. And it's a slower kind of slice of life book about adolescence and coming to terms with the world and figuring out that we're all connected to one another. Not fast paced at all, but I, I really loved it. So I don't necessarily have to go on a journey. Again, it goes back to character. I did not DNF a lot of books when I was younger, but I will DNF now. And for those of you who don't know, DNF means do not finish. But I also put a lot of books down and to pick up later. And sometimes I pick them up years later and just pick up where I left off. If you look back at like my, the books I've rated on Goodreads, you're gonna see, you know, kind of my reading journey. I think the majority of us start off reading books that are problematic because that's what was around when we were younger. That was what was easier to find. And it helped us to develop our love for reading. And it's now as we're older and we look back and we realize how problematic those books were. I am very much a mood reader, and so it, it kind of goes, what is my mood? What am I interested in reading? And if a book is problematic, now I'm not gonna waste my time. I have thousands of books that I'm interested in reading. A book that has a lot of abuse or violence or sexual assault, I don't wanna read. There's been so much of those items and books that I've already read. I, I don't want to read that if that's your central plot. Even if it's somebody who's overcoming it in a fantasy or a science fiction world, I don't want to read it. It, it. To me, that's just a bad plot. So that's things that will take me off. But I am probably very weird in a lot of book communities where I don't go go and research the author. Uh, there's no way nicely to say this, but a problematic author doesn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily make me not want to read their books because I just don't know. It, unless I see it usually on here on YouTube where someone's like, oh, this author did this or this author thinks this. And that's when I find out, oh, okay, they're problematic. Again, it doesn't necessarily mean that I won't read their books, though, in the future. So, yeah, problematic authors, I probably don't know that they are problematic and will go ahead and pick up their book. You're welcome to tell me when I go, oh, hey, I read this, be like, oh, hey, that person's problematic. Sure, go ahead, tell me. It probably is not going to affect whether or not I want to read the book. So as an author, yes, you always put a little bit of yourself into a book, but 
that does not mean that the book as a whole is a reflection of you as an author. You know, we write fantasy. Well, okay, so it does depend on what genre, but for me, I read more fantasy than science fiction, so I read science fiction, I read fantasy. You get a variety of views that are in these books, so no, the author is not clearly represented on the page. Even in the narrative voice, that's a structure style. That is not the author. The author is not the narrator. The narrator is just another character to the book. And I speak from experience and as someone who writes because my narrators typically won't have my voice style. So they also don't always have my thoughts. So maybe I give these problematic authors a little more leeway in that instance. And while I'm a big science fiction reader, I actually hate dystopian. A dystopian can be, you can have a dystopian fantasy or a dystopian science fiction. Some people think it's only science fiction, but no, you, you can have it in, in a fantasy just because a dystopian is imagining a state or society where there's great suffering or injustice. Well, going off of that definition, we live in a dystopian now. Why do I want to read about a future dystopia or an alternate world dystopia? I, I see where you can have interesting characters and things happening. And so I'm very picky on what dystopias I pick up, especially if that is the buzzword for it. If someone's like, hey, this book is a dystopia, I you're going to have to give me more uh, things to, for me to pick that up. If all you talk, say is this is dystopia, it's not going on my want to read list. Some tropes or archetypes, buzzwords that do get me is one, well, the biggest one, if you've been here for a while, space opera. You tell me it's a space opera, I'm going to go, oh, please, can I have this book? Because I like space operas. Anything like, if, if your book is set in space, I probably will be interested in picking it up at some point. I like worlds where you get to meet the natives of that world. And, yeah, even, like, how explorers merge. So a book I have that really talks about how two societies, like, have to come to understand each other is Valor's Choice by Tanya Huff. Yeah, this follows Taryn Kerr, who is in the military, and the military wants to make this new planet an ally. So they're going on a goodwill tour, and what they think the goodwill tour should be ends up the native society has a different way of doing things, and so they expect something different. I like seeing how societies change and evolve. It's like looking at our society now and going, what, what, how could this possibly evolve? And again, I'm not interested when they evolve into a, everything is over and crashed and, and we're a dystopia now, but we've evolved and some things have stayed the same and then some other things have changed and altered. Another world evolving book that's interesting is Emergency Skin by N.K. Jemison. This is actually like a short novella, like short story novella kind of link. And it's, <laughs> we get to see a world where people have learned to live in harmony. And it talks about how that was possible. For romances, I know if you tell me it's a friends to lovers or rivals to lovers, I tend to like those as well. I'm probably all over the place on this, but I think mostly characters, I, I have to be able to get inside their head whether I like them or not. I have to be able to empathize with them. If you tell me it's a space opera, it'll jump to the top of my want to read list. Give me a compelling society. Make me want to be in your book. Yeah. Those are really the things that are going to draw me as a reader. Thank you for joining me. And like Kristenel, I am going to ask you viewer to do this video as well or if you're not someone who makes videos tell me down below what do you like what what do you like for reading what are you looking for as a person or what are you looking for as a reader what works well for you and what doesn't 
Let's continue this conversation. Thank you and have a great day.